Welcome friends to this uh, final lecture of week 10 and in this lecture we will be talking about remote sensing in soil survey and uh, in the last uh, lecture we talked about the soil survey and uh, this uh, we covered several aspects of soil survey we talked about what is soil survey and what are the utilities of the soil survey remember uh, soil survey is very much important for uh, uh, better management of natural resources uh, that means uh, natural resources of, uh, we talked about soil and then we talked about what are the objectives both fundamental objectives as well as uh, applied objectives of soil survey and then we talked about uh, uh, what are the uh, you know uses of soil survey what are the different process procedure of soil survey we talked about different orders of soil, soil survey starting from first order second order third order fourth order to fifth order remember that fifth order is the uh, you know least detailed whereas first order is the more detailed soil survey and in first order the size of the land we survey is less than 0 0.5 hectare and obviously, uh, the scale is much more detailed in case of first order than that of the fifth order. And then we talked about different types of remote sensing object, remote sensing platforms which cover different ranges of soil order, you know, or different orders of soil survey. And then we talked about different map, you know, what are the different mapping units and what are the different terms like mapping association and then consociation, then undifferentiated group and so on and so forth. And then we talked about different uh, steps which are involved in uh, actual soil survey uh, and uh, I told you about the what are the individual soil profile parameters we uh, generally consider when we describe any particular soil profile. So, uh, we also talked about different uh, limitations of soil survey. Now, remember that uh, the soil survey while discussing about the soil survey, I talked about some base maps and uh, we talked about four types of base maps. One is cadastral map, then uh, you know uh, uh, cadastral maps, then topographic maps, then aerial imagery and then remote sensing. So, uh, we will be focusing in this lecture most on remote sensing because it has become a indispensable tool in not only in different other domains of science but also in uh, soil survey. So, we will be only focusing on what are the aspects of remote sensing uh, or what are the applicabilities of remote sensing in soil survey. So, uh, we will be covering this following concept first of all we will be covering what is the what is remote sensing and then uh, 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 we know uh, then what is uh, the scorpion model and then we will be talking about remote sensing of soil farming factors. So, uh, let us start with uh, the definition of remote sensing you know that remote sensing is a method for getting information about uh, uh, you know about the different objects on the planet without any physical contact with it. So, it is a remotely sensed I remember that there are several uh, you know um, satellite platforms uh, remote, remote sensing can be done from several uh, platforms it can be done from satellite platform it can be done from um, uh, you know from different low altitude flights or aerial imageries or it can be done through drones also. So, uh, we will be mostly, mostly focusing on the satellite based remote sensing I remember that there are different satellite and satellite constellations which are uh, actually rounding our earth. Uh, all you know throughout the year and these satellites can capture different images and they can send us and these images are basically showing uh, you know these images can be analyzed to show different features of the earth surface, different distribution, different spatial distribution of several things in the earth surface and uh, we can effectively use those images as base map in doing any soil survey because these remote sensing are very very sensitive to several features not only the geological features, but also different types of soil chemical and physical features uh, and they can identify those features over the earth surface and we will discuss how they can use this. Uh, how we can use these features or how they we can use this information for our soil survey. 
So, this shows an example of a satellite picture, you can see it is an image and uh, image uh, you know uh, satellite imagery consists of photographs collected by satellites and this satellite image we can use for further uh, analysis and we can query different types of uh, you know uh, uh, different, uh, different types of landforms as well as different types of other information from this images. Now, uh, nowadays image you know remote sensing has become an important tool in soil survey and uh, this because of several advantages. Uh, you can see here different platforms of remote sensing starting from low altitude flight for aerial imagery and then uh, different types of satellites uh, you know like Landsat, Iconos, Quickbird, Aster some of them are uh, you know commercial satellites and their respective feature, you know pictures taken by this uh, satellites. So, obviously, remote sensing has several advantages. Uh, you know some uh, these remote sensing uh, the advantages can be uh, delineated as like you know uh, the, 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 there are several advantages of remote sensing. First of all, it can provide a view uh, for the large region with you know using this uh, satellite imagery you can capture a large region of area. And uh, secondly, it can offers geo inf referenced information and digital information. So, uh, not only you can capture a large area, but also you can uh, gather it in a digitized format, but also and also you can geo reference this information. That means, it has uh, some special reference and this is very, very important anything which have must have a special reference which you know uh, that shows the uh, uh, you know special distribution of several features. And finally, most of the remote sensors operate in every season, every day and every time and even in real tough weather. So, that is why we can get uh, in uh, you know continuous uh, inflow of data or continuous inflow of uh, images in digitized format from this remote sensing different remote sensing platform. They are working throughout the year and we can gather the information periodically to analyze anything over the earth surface. So, remote sensing in soil survey why it is important? Remote sensing can be used as a tool to gain additional information for soil survey obviously. So, because viewing the remotely sensed image in various spectral bands helps in the uh, you know distinguishing unique features and uh, the scorpion factors are used as a means of differentiation. So, we are talking about this scorpion thing. Uh, from the very beginning of this lecture, what is this scorpion? We'll learn in a club, in a, in a, you know, in a couple of slides. So, let us go ahead and see what is the conceptual model of soil formation. So, before going to the scorpion, we need to discuss this thing. Now, uh, according to this scientist Jenny Hans Jenny, uh, in 1941, he has developed. Uh, a soil you know a equation which shows the soil formation. Now, soil formation according to his equation is basically function of 5 different factors. These 5 different factors are basically P, uh, I am sorry these are basically 5 different factors which are denoted by P, then C L, then O, then R and T. So, P basically stands for parent material. C L basically stands for climate, O basically stands for organisms, R basically stands for relief and T basically stands for time. So, we can see that uh, you know soil can be defined as a function of 5 different important factors, well, you know parent material, you know parent material, then climate, then organism, then relief and time. So, Obviously, uh, some of the most commonly you, you know, uh, you know for, for, for getting this relief uh, factor, we can use nowadays called DEM, we will we'll talk about DEM little bit in a you know in a, in a, in a while. You remember that this DEM is a digitized file which shows the surface feature of any 
uh, of any you know surface feature of the earth and these uh, terrain attributes uh, basically quantify the relief factors in Jenny's model and some of the most commonly used uh, terrain uh, indices which we develop from DEM are basically slope then altitude of channel network, valley bottom flatness, topographic wetness index and so on and so forth. So, we will discuss this later on while we will be uh, discussing the DEM file. But remember that according to the JD, uh, you know soil can be defined as a function of these five different factors. Now, this is the pre, this is the base model through from which this new Scorpion model concept has evolved. And this Scorpion model concept was given by uh, renowned soil scientist Alex McBratney of, Uni of the University of Sydney in the year 2003. And this Scorpion model says that uh, soil basically is a function of this S C O R P A N uh, plus some uh, error, if, uh, plus some errors. So. According to this Scorpion model, uh, soil is uh, soil formation can be defined as basically as a function of soil, which 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 stands for S, then climate, then organisms, then R stands for relief, then P stands for parent material, A stands for age, and N stands for location x y. So basically, we are giving some locational context to the soil form to the to a particular soil. So, a particular soil at a particular place is a function of all these factors for some unmeasured or you know uh, errors. So, remember one thing that using this model it is possible to, to basically to basically to basically digitize uh, or to basically save any soil information or any soil formation uh, I would say decision framework in digitized format. For example, uh, we get this information of soil uh, from this legacy soil data or soil profiles so from the soil profiles or soil maps like any base map or any soil profile data which has been already gathered and characterized. Then also we can get different types of soil sensing to remote sensing and also climate can be you know climate organism relief parent material we can gather this from different uh, uh, remote sensing platform or different other sources. Age can be used, age can be data on the age can also be gathered through different sources. Location context, we can get it from uh, uh, GPS, and uh, this F stands for basically special inference model when we generally use some models to specify or to predict any particular soil property. So, you see this is why this is what we call Scorpion model. Now, the beauty of Scorpion model is you can gather all this information about these factors in a digitized format and you can keep it. Now, how we can gather this digitized information for this factor? This is the question. So, first of all climate obviously soil you can get it from different types of soil sensing or soil characterization data which has been already done and then climate data you know cli you can use different types of climate model outputs uh, for organism uh, you can use remote sensing and vegetation and land use uh, remote sensing of the vegetation and land use uh, for relief you can use either DEM or DTM digital you know digital terrain models and for parent material you can also use remote sensing uh, or digitized uh, uh, geological map and for uh, location you can use map distance from landscape features. So, remember one thing that for organism relief parent material all these can be gathered through remote sensing and that is why it is becoming very very important for using this remote sensing data for uh, digital uh, for, uh, for, uh, for this uh, soil survey purpose. Because using the soil survey or for for uh, or uh, in the better management of soil survey or better application of soil survey, you need this information and this information you can gather from remote sensing. So, let us see uh, what is you know how we can use the remote sensing data. Now, this shows basically the uh, reflectance pattern of different types of features which are present over the earth surface. So, you can see this is the reflectance pattern of turbid river water, this is a clear lake water reflectance pattern, obviously there is a dry soil with 5 percent water. You can see here two important absorption here at 1450 and 1900 nanometer which are coming from the moisture which is present in the soil. 
and this green line basically shows the uh, you know reflectance pattern of the vegetation obviously remember that this vegetation can absorb you know this vegetation are showing high absorbance in the visible region and reflectance in the near infrared region. So, this is a this is a feature of healthy vegetation and uh, you know wet soil this is a wet soil. So, obviously dry soil and wet soil which 20 percent water is showing the differences in the reflectance pattern. So, the, the, the idea is you can use these reflectance patterns which you and uh, these reflectance pattern you can gather this information of this reflectance pattern by analyzing these remotely sensed images because images are nothing but some uh, you know images, images contain spectral information and from each image from each pixel of the image you can gather this type of spectra. Now, once you gather the image and you analyze the individual pixel of this image and you gather this type of uh, spectra obviously, you can identify okay, what is the feature which is present in that particular pixel. Now, so that is how we can use the remote sensing to gather the information about the surface feature over the earth surface, whether it is a soil, whether it is a plant, whether it is a uh, dry soil, whether it is a wet soil, whether it is a water. So, all this information you can gather it. You can see here it is an NDVI map, we will be talking about this NDVI. So, it basically shows the distribution of healthy vegetation and uh, dead vegetation or non-healthy vegetation in a, in, a, in a particular field. So, that also we can gather from this information we can be gathered can be gathered from uh, this remote sensing. So, that is why uh, this remote sensing has become a very important tool in the in soil survey. So, let us talk about these plants. So, plant you know it is an important feature import you know important component of organisms. So, plant leaves contain chlorophyll which absorb visible radiation you can see here in this in this range it is called it is absorbing visible radiation that is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 microns or 400 to 700 nanometer especially red and they reflect in the near infrared radiation that is 0 0.7 to 1.1 nanometer. So, you can see here. Now, you see there are two graph two basically reflectance patterns one is for healthy sugar beets another is for stressed sugar beets. So, obviously healthy sugar beets are you know having more chlorophyll. So, they are absorbing more visible in the more is visible length from 0 to uh, or 400 to 700 nanometer. However, the stress sugar beet has less chlorophyll. So, they are basically um, not absorbing as much as this healthy vegetation. So, they are reflecting more. However, in the reflect in the, in the near infrared region this healthy vegetation is reflecting more. So, the lushy vegetation can be differentiated from a dead or senescent vegetation by observing this NIR peaks and their uh, you know this reflectance pattern. So, uh, using this they, we have developed scientists have developed a index called NDVI which is basically normalized difference vegetation index and it is used to find the relative abundance of vegetation and NDVI can be calculated by using this formula where NDVI equal to NIR minus red over NIR plus red and it ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. So, it is a normalized index obviously and NIR means near infrared band and R means red band of landsat respectively landsat is a satellite and uh, this green vegetation reflects NIR and absorbed uh, red. So, uh, this near infrared you know this uh, green vegetation reflects NIR. So, here you can see higher the NDVI higher the vegetation density and vice versa. So, obviously, in this, this is an NDVI map and high values are represented by this green color and low values are represented by this red color. So, obviously, by this NDVI maps you can see the spatial distribution of the healthy vegetation as well as the diseased uh, plants. So, this is how we can gather the information of the organism from analyzing different types of maps which we can generate through remote sensing. So, guys, uh, uh, this is an NDVI map in gray scale. Obviously, uh, you can see here black means no vegetation, uh, example, uh, river highways, white are high vegetation intensity, that is, thick grass adjacent to river, and intermediate gray scales are lighter in color, more the vegetation density. So, it shows also how this uh, vegetation and uh, you know the other features 
so this uh, NDVI has becoming a very very important aspect nowadays for identifying the vegetation and their characteristics and their uh, density and all these things. So all this information we can gather from remote sensing data. So the next is a parent material you saw this parent material data is very very also important which is an important uh, you know important factor in scorpion model and remember the soil is made up of wide variety of the parent material it can be made of calcite it can be made of uh, you know montmorillonite hematite all these different types of clay minerals and other minerals which are present into the soil and they characterize different types of rocks so these individual minerals or clay minerals all they have their individual spectral patterns so you can see the calcite has their own spectral patterns and you can see here this is a reflectance pattern so they have their different types of uh, you know absorption peaks and you know this is a montmorillon which is an important uh, soil clay mineral it is also having important peaks so also hematite having their own uh, peaks in short wave infrared region as well as this uh, you know visible region so you can see soils are made of these uh, individual minerals and these minerals can be identified by analyzing their reflectance peaks. So, uh, we know the minerals present in the soil vary in their spectral responses and it is particularly evident in short wave infrared region that is 1.1 to 3 microns. So, or 1300 nanometer to 3000 nanometer. So, you can use the spectral features which you can gather from remote sensing images to identify which is the particular parent material which is more prevalent in that particular area. Now, you can see it is a parent material map which we have created from different uh, remote sensing from a particular remote sensing platform. Now, soil, soil can be identified using physical, chemical and biological properties obviously, each chemical has a typical spectral features or response which is used as you can see here for example, gypsum it is the showing the gypsum and uh, you know gypsum has a diagnostic spectral responses in short wave infrared region you can see these are the important uh, absorption features and by using these absorption features you can map the dominance of gypsum we will be talking about this thing later on while we will be discussing different types of diffuse reflectance spectroscopy in our uh, uh, for in our in our coming lectures. But remember that using the spectral features it is possible to identify individual component which is present in the soil. Now, you can see here we are using also remote sensing to identify the organic matter concentration or percentage of organic matter and special variability over the earth surface. So, so, these are some applications of, or, of uh, remote sensing for identifying the soil features. So, not only the soil features also uh, you can use for identifying remote sensing you can use for uh, you know creating the DEMs and uh, the DEM is basically digital elevation model which is a 3D representation of the terrain surface. It is basically same in terms of rasters or gridded cells and these gridded cells are basically containing uh, different numbers or different elevation values which we can see in you know in the form of DEM and from these DEM it is very very you can see you can see the values high or low and you can identify which are the areas which are having higher elevation which are the areas which are having lower elevation and you can also calculate different types of surface features or indices from this DEM and you can use it for soil survey and for predicting a particular soil property at a particular point. So, that is why it is called the you know it, it, it is it is it is becoming a very important feature in, uh, in, in soil surface. So, that is why remote sensing is also becoming more and more important nowadays for effective soil survey. So, relief factors again it, you know it, you can collect it from this DEM and relief help in generation of the ancillary data as I have talked about you can develop different types of slope, altitude, curvature, wetness index from analyzing this relief or digital elevation model. Model. For example, you can see here blue uh, in this digital elevation model blue basically shows low elevation white is basically shows high elevation and here you can see blue means level land and white is extremely steep land. So, you use this digital elevation model or you can use this relief data you can use this relief data to identify the uh, surface features and surface curvatures and surface uh, you know irregularities and you can use this for effective soil survey and proper mapping of the mapping. Uh, proper mapping of the soil and delineation of the mapping units. So, guys uh, 
uh, you can see that uh, we have covered I have I've, I've tried to give you a basic overview of how remote sensing we can use the remote sensing effectively for, uh, for, for, for soil survey. Now, remember that again soil survey you know soil survey uh, is, a, is, a, is a costly process and it requires huge amount of involvement. So, nowadays we are making it simpler now it is you know we are, we are earlier it was kind of subjective now we are giving it much more quantitative as more much more quantitative support by uh, using some ancillary data and this ancillary data which we can gather uh, you know from different uh, remote sensing platform is becoming you know a very important tool nowadays and remember we are basically based on you know we, we uh, you know these ancillary data are we are gathering this ancillary data based on the scorpion model and scorpion model says that you can gather all this information in digitized format we are using different remote sensing platform to get the information for the organisms for relief for parent material for other soil features and we are actually incorporating them for better uh, you know better delineation of different features over the soil uh, over the surface and we better def better uh, better delineation of the soil mapping units and better uh, def better better description of the soil so um, obviously it really it, it is a kind of high you know it is a kind of overview of uh, the use of use of uh, remote sensing for soil survey. Now, there is a vast amount of research which is going on in different countries of application of this uh, remote sensing for uh, for uh, for this uh, soil survey. I would uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and see some literature, do some more research in this applic you know regarding this remote sensing and its application for uh, soil survey and I hope that uh, you have gathered some knowledge uh, in this week 10 of lectures and uh, now we have completed this week 10 of lectures for uh, and also you can come you know you can consult this reference that is remote sensing for soil survey application by Janice Bertinger which uh, who is an uh, uh, professor and uh, of soil science at uh, Utah and uh, so you can use this as a reference and uh, hopefully this inform you know this lecture has been informative to you and uh, let us wrap up here and let us meet in the next uh, week of lectures that is uh, week 11 of uh, lectures on soil survey and technology thank you and uh, let us meet in the next week of lectures